All right, Gibbs Free Energy. Um, in, as we go through this page, there's really only one thing I want you to pay attention to to really know this down here. Know this bottom equation in the box here. But it's not a bad idea to see where it comes from because when we are talking about delta S, delta H, delta G, realize they're all really related to the first and second laws of thermodynamics. Okay, so, ah, as we said before, the change in entropy of the universe equals a change in entropy of the system plus the change in entropy of the surroundings. Uh, note, we said that the change in entropy of the system ah, is negative delta H system over T. So, delta, or of our surroundings, change in entropy of the surroundings is negative delta H system divided by T. So that means this equation becomes the change in entropy of the universe equals the change in entropy of the system minus delta H of the system divided by temperature. If we multiply everything by negative T, that gets rid of this minus sign becomes plus and gets rid of that T until we get a negative T in front of delta S system and negative T in front of delta S universe. Uh, rearrange this. I'm just going to swap these two because I don't like the negative here and a plus there. Is it easier just to move this over? I think so. Negative T delta S of the universe equals delta H, the enthalpy change of the system, minus the temperature times the entropy change of the system. This value right here, negative T delta S, is called the change in Gibbs free energy. Gibbs free energy is just G. The change in Gibbs free energy is delta G. Okay. So note that the delta S of the universe, if, the, if a process is spontaneous, if a process is spontaneous, we know delta S, the change in the entropy of the universe, has to be a positive number. The, the universe's entropy gets more random. A positive number times temperature, note this is absolute value, or not absolute value, excuse me, this is um, uh, in Kelvin, where we have an absolute zero, so all temperatures are positive numbers, so a positive times a positive times a negative means that if our system goes towards randomness, if, or excuse me, if the universe goes towards randomness, we have a spontaneous process, positive delta S, that means delta G will have a negative value. For a spontaneous process, delta S universe is positive. Since we have this negative sign, it means delta G is negative. And just putting in, since our negative T delta S universe is delta G, we put in the bottom delta G equals delta H minus T delta S, which means if you want to know if a reaction is going to go or not, if you want to know if a reaction is spontaneous, you need to look at the enthalpy of the reaction, endothermic, exothermic, and the entropy of the reaction, randomness or more towards order, and we have to pay attention to the temperature also. All right, so what does all this mean? Let's break it down into a little table right here. If delta G is negative, if the change in Gibbs free energy is negative, that means our reaction is spontaneous. The reaction goes to the right. Note, in general, that's something we want. We tend to be happy when our reactions actually work, when they actually go to the right. So a spontaneous reaction goes to the right. We like that. If delta G is positive, it means the reaction is not spontaneous. The equilibrium is lies to the left. The reaction does not go. That usually makes us sad. Note, if delta H is negative, that means the reaction is exothermic. Heat is given off, and we tend to like exothermic reactions. They tend to work well. If delta H is positive, that means it's an endothermic reaction. Heat is taken in. Those reactions tend to not go very well. If delta S is negative, that means the products are more ordered. Energy is not dispersed, then nature doesn't like that. If delta S is positive, it means the products are less ordered during the reaction. The reactants are ordered, the products are less ordered. The, that's the way nature likes it, because it can disperse the energy. That's a natural tendency. That's good. 
So in general, the way nature likes it, the way nature wants reactions to happen, they would like nature to would like reactions to be spontaneous, which means nature wants them to be exothermic, which means the products are lower in energy, are more stable than the reactants, and the products are also less ordered than the reaction reactants. In general, a spontaneous reaction often you're going to find is the products are at lower energy, and that energy is dispersed over more states because they're less ordered. That's the way we like it. Spontaneous, exothermic, products disordered. Uh, but there are other ways to get spontaneous reactions. Let's look at delta G minus delta, or delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Let's look at various things. Note we said if delta H is negative, it's exothermic. We like that. If delta S is positive, it's less ordered. We like that. And so that reaction will be spontaneous. No matter what you what temperature you run it at, run it at, this reaction will go. If it gives off heat and forms less ordered product, that reaction is spontaneous all the time. But what if it takes in heat? What if it's an endothermic reaction? Usually that's not good for spontaneity. Um, and delta S is negative, which means it goes to more order. So it's an endothermic reaction. The products are less stable than the reactants. The products are at higher energy, and they're more ordered products also. Uh, that reaction will never be spontaneous, not a, no matter what temperature you try to heat it at. But what happens if we have an exothermic reaction that has a negative delta S means the products are more ordered? An exothermic reaction, smiley face. More ordered products, frowny face. Uh, that reaction is going to be spontaneous at low temperatures. Because note, our temperature multiplies our delta S. If delta S is negative, then if our temperature is small, we take that negative delta S times a small number, and usually delta H is going to be larger than that. Okay. Okay. So, uh, that means that at low temperatures, a small number multiplied by this delta S means our entropy value is not as important as delta H. It is a smaller number. Note that what if our delta H is positive and our delta S is also positive? Now we have an endothermic reaction, goes to higher energy, but the products are less ordered, which we like. So we need our delta S term to be more important. How we make it more important? By multiplying it by a larger number. And if T is a large number, that's temperature, means that it's at high temperatures. So this situation will be spontaneous at high temperatures. Uh, negative delta H, negative delta S is only going to be spontaneous at low temperatures. All right. Cool. Cool. So, that being said, what we tend to find, and we're going to show that when we're in the next step when we're calculating delta S's of reactions, that when we do our calculations of delta S and delta H, even taking account this temperature, the way it tends to work is spontaneous is usually dependent on delta H. So, if a reaction is exothermic, then the safe bet is that it is spontaneous. It might not be, but of these two terms, delta H and delta S, we're going to find delta H is the more important term. Exothermic reactions tend to be spontaneous. Endothermic reactions tend to not be spontaneous, especially if you're at room temperature. If you're at room temperature, exothermic reactions tend to be spontaneous. Endothermic reactions tend not to be spontaneous. However, if you want to make sure, you want to really know if it's spontaneous or not, you have to look at the T delta S term. You can't just look at delta H. So in our next video, we will start looking at calculating our change in entropy of reactions.